I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, April 15th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. All right, if you don't mind standing for our invocation by Bill Lindsay, our Vice Mayor. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, Lord. Thank you for the blessings you've uh, given us in this city, this council administration. Father, we thank you for all the young people here today. Even though they need their hours, we are glad they're here to, to uh, watch the uh, proceedings and how the city is operating. Father, we ask you once again to protect our firefighters, our police officers, and our military. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. On advice by Mr. Lowry, we're going to have Jacob here, our junior councilman. As Mr. Lowry named him, lead us in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, action on the minutes for a 325-19 special meeting. So moved. Second. Second was Shammy. Yep. Any comments? <clears throat> nope, Mrs. Burner. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Minutes accepted 6-0. All right, do we have a motion for 4-1-19 regular meeting? So moved. Second. Discussion? None. Mrs. Berner? Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Minutes accepted 6 0. Fantastic. No communications tonight. City Manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. <laughs> I'd like to share with you the City Manager's report. And we'll start off with our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Watson. All right. Good evening, everyone, and members of council. So my report tonight does not include March's totals. They're coming soon due to the fact we're still working with SSI in our configuration process. But uh, we're, everything's going well. Everything's uh, the city's still running. Bills are still getting paid. We just uh, don't. They recommended me for to, to wait, hold off to enter March things until we get the configuration process down pat. So, but we do have year-to-date totals. Uh, Revenue collected, 641,519.51. And year-to-date total expenses are 571,594.71. Uh, Mr. Bridge and myself are, uh, completed our training in the analytics portion of our um, new uh, software programs, and we're looking forward to working with this program. It, it does create a lot of um, graphs and, and percentages, and uh, you'll like the reports coming to you soon. If you have any questions. Council, hearing none, thank you, Ms. Watson. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service report, our service director, Mr. Kitko. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Bridge, mayor, members of council, members of the public. Start off with our service departments. As it has gotten warm and we have moved out of uh, winter, the street department has started doing our pothole repair, and we are doing that with the Dura Patcher. Um, they're repairing the mains and secondaries first, and then we're moving on to the side streets, and then we will go back through the alleys and get those tidied up. 2018, 2019, various road projects. Galewood Drive reconstruction project, the 300 block of Galewood Drive, will be reconstructed in 2019. Engineering is complete, and the plans are at the county being put out for bid, and I just found out uh, Friday that those will be May 2nd. I will be at the county commissioner's office to open those, uh, or be there present for the bid opening. We have about $70,000 to put towards overlays this year, uh, not as much as we've had in the last uh, two to three. However, we are gonna go ahead and button up the Willowick area by uh, paving Hemlock, Butternut, and Bittersweet. Uh, those are coming in right now at estimated about 59,000. So that does allow me a little bit of wiggle room case those are high and or if Gale Wood or any of our other projects happen to come in um, high also. Uh, 
just a bullet point to something we'll be thinking about here in the near future uh, with the approval of additional gas tax. Um, we hope to see that the street repairs should see a bump in the amount that we're able to um, put down in asphalt uh, coming up. 2019 wastewater plant influ influent building upgrade project. The anticipated arrival for the pump is April 12th. We do have a date set of April 24th. I believe that's a Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to go ahead and get that pump installed and running by close of business on Friday. Um, and then currently the plans are at the Ohio EPA to get our permit to install approved. Once that is done, uh, we will get all the specs brought to the city building and we will be putting that out for bid. Traffic signal upgrade project, the right of way acquisition phase is complete. We have uh, paid all the vendors and I have a document out seeking reimbursement for those um, payments to those vendors, which is being paid by um, federal funds. And that project should be, once final tracings are done by the engineer here in June, go out by ODOT for bid sometime summer, fall. And then uh, I think it's like three to six months for ordering of those uh, mast arms and decorative poles that the signals will be on. So uh, construction should be starting in spring of 2020. And that is all I have in my report. Can I entertain any questions on that? Right. Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Um, thank you for the report, Mr. Kitko. Um, I wanted to go over something real quick, if you don't mind, Mr. Kitko, Mr. Bridge. Um, I'd, I'd spoke to a couple of council members about this as well, and I'll, if they want to chime in in a little bit, I'll let them. Um, the other day, I was at the house, out in the front yard doing some work and whatnot, one of the city guys that drove by the house in one of the trucks. And, you know, they pulled over, stopped, and said hi for a couple of minutes before they went on their way. And it was the old blue, uh, I think it's a Ford F-350, 2000. It's probably one of the worst ones. Um, it's the one that has the hole in the floorboard under, the, I think, the driver's side seat or under the driver's side area. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about stretching the dollars in New Carolina. And we, we, we use our equipment as long as we can and, and get every nickel we can out of it. I think we've done a really good job at that. But, you know, I think at certain times there comes a point where, you know, putting money into some of these vehicles is, you know, it's no longer just, it's not the, the right way to go. Um, with this vehicle being in the fleet and it having a hole on the floorboard, I think it would be time to, and I don't know what it would take to do it, I think we need to replace it. I think it, I mean, now, this year, as soon as possible. Uh, you know, I know we brought that report up that Mr. Kitko did a really good job on, on all of our city vehicles, and I was, and I was hoping that would have been put into the budget of the CIP, and I'll, and I'll be honest, and I'll take partial blame, I totally forgot about some of these vehicles getting put in there. And then when I'd seen this truck again, uh, it just, you know, I, I wouldn't expect any of our deputies to be in a, in a vehicle that has a hole in the floorboard or, or any of the other city workers. I don't know uh, the status of all of our vehicles, but I know a couple of the, some of the ones that are more serious like that one. Um, you know, I think it's an F-350, am I correct? Ford F-350. Right. And, and that one also gets used for plowing as well. Uh, it does not. No, it it does. used to. We okay. just don't really use it anymore for that. Okay. So I looked up, you know, and you know, some of the 350s and a new one ballpark, and I don't know if the city gets any breaks on anything like that or not. Um, around forty thousand uh, dollars. I know that's a that's a little chunk of money, but I just feel that, you know, when we're putting fireworks up in the sky and things like that, which we could we can play that game all day long. We, there's many areas that we could use improvement on, but I just don't feel right sitting up here knowing someone in the city is driving around with a hole in their floorboard. And I would like to see what we can do to get it fixed as soon as possible. Not fixed, as in replaced. Well, that's something that should have been brought up for our CIP. I agree. Take and, 40, and especially out of the street departments, which are run pretty thin from year to year. Um, it's something that we'll have to we'll open up the budget if council is adamant about buying a whole new vehicle. I'm sure when Howie takes these into consideration, you look at the body of that car. Clearly, there's probably a floor and a hole board, but the car may run well. Um, so we may be able to fix that hole if the actual car is running very well. But I will let Howie take this over. It's his department. He knows way more about the cars than I do. Um, You're right about us trying to stretch. The, and the you do. And that's a good thing. But I think at a certain point, it becomes, you know, it needs to be taken care of. Um, we can um, get that fixed um, with a new floor pan. It is not going to be perfect. As you know, once rust starts, it, it goes. You have to cut the whole thing out. Uh, anything that's rust, you can't weld the rust. So you've got to get it way back. It also does need cap corners and rocker panels, which for anyone knows, that's everything along the bottom part of the door and the back cap corners. 
The bed has been replaced on it. The dump bed was replaced, I think, five years ago. We redid that in the boxes. So the chassis, the engine, and the, everything is good, but the cab is starting to rust out on it. Um, I can probably get it a little, uh, probably to get, try to get another year out of it, to be honest with you. Uh, a full spec'd out truck is going to be close to about seventy-five to 90000 That's the chassis that you saw. I can get the chassis on state bid. And then when you get the dump body, plow, and get the hydraulics installed, that's where it gets pricey. Mm -hmm. um, so when I get, to, I can actually spec one out through the state bid um, and bring those numbers back to you to see what a new, because that is Waters truck. That truck is um, one of the two main ones they use for water main brakes outside the big one. So I can go. Oh, it's not it. a street one. It's not a street car. Not I'm that sorry, one. Sir. Not okay. that one. Now it's water department. Okay. And I can go get one spec'd out. It's pretty easy. I can go right through the state and it, get the out-the-door package, lights, belt, all the stuff on it. If we, if we had just gotten the, the bed for that one a few years back, I mean, can it not be transferred over to a new vehicle? No, the Fords have changed. The chassis have changed um, through model years. Okay. So, yeah, even the, the bed that we got on our new IH that you guys had allowed us to purchase, that 13000 for our IH bed, it was hard finding that bed to fit on an IH from 2001. Okay. So yeah, some things some things are a little harder because chassis or the beds come with subframes, and not all chassis are the same. They keep changing the bodies. Okay, uh, I think in your report, if I remember, it said that that truck, along with the one at the cemetery, were constantly breaking down and losing power and, and constant maintenance. So I mean, you think it's best to wait another year for that? Uh, let me let me spec it out. We maintenance on it. Um, when I say constant maintenance, that's you know we might have some belts. Um, We'll increase the oil changes on it. Um, just you know, steering linkage is starting to go. I mean, things like that. Um, Engine-wise, has not been a has not been an issue. Other than it is getting old. It's a 2001. It doesn't have the horsepower and torque it did 19 years, 18 years ago. Right. So um, let me spec one out. Obviously, we can keep a truck running super long, but then it just becomes inefficient to run. Yeah. Okay. So depending on if you're going to get a price on one. And depending on you know what what council and everyone else feels about it, I mean, but as of right now, you, your thoughts are regardless. Let's say if we don't get one, you were thinking about replacing it next year. I, I had some I had some ideas because I do have some trucks that are really starting to degrade, like the pickup truck in uh, Street Department. Right, it's got the same situation. It is it's starting to. All these parts break and you got to replace them still drives it still hauls things in the bed of it but it's getting the same way and, and these vehicles are 18 well it would be going on 19 years old because some of them are 2000 and some are 2001s mm -hmm. and that's i mean even at 19 i mean you see some trucks or vehicles out on the road that are still in great shape but i mean when you're getting or getting abused like i'm sure they do here not for misuse but just from city work so and, and please if anybody looks at the, you'll see a lot of these dealers and um, have a used one, say it's probably five years old, unless it has a stainless body, they're getting rid of it usually for some reason. So we're real hesitant on not going with a used dump truck with hydraulics and depends on model year of diesels. Some had issues. We're well aware of what model years we go for and things like that, so. Okay, so we can, you can get us a, a build price though, just so we kind of know what we're looking at? I can get you a build price, yeah. Okay, great. Good. Does it for me? Mr. Cobb. Mr. Kiko, if, if we're getting that bad of vehicles, I think we need to go through all of our fleet and equipment. You, you, you talked about how the boom truck's bad. You know, we, we just need to pull everything out and go through it. Everything goes, every, you mean just in like uh, pulled out to go to look for replacement? Or are you talking about pulled out to just, because it, well, it, it we, need, we need to have an understanding of what's bad in this fleet. Because, I mean, you've got several trucks you're saying that the floorboard's gone, the bed's still good. And that is, that's numerous. That is probably 75% of our fleet is very similar to that condition. I didn't know that. Well, that's something we need to look into because in the wintertime, you've got exhaust fumes coming up through the hole in the floorboards. I don't feel like burying any. We don't have issues with those because our exhaust systems are tailed out the back. So we don't have exhaust issues with ours, but I, I'm well familiar with you. I, I've been a mechanic for 20 years, so I'm real, real familiar with that. And we don't have any issues with ours on those. But um, yeah, I mean, if I had the dollars, I just was telling Mr. Bridge that the 2001 IH, our big uh, dump truck, 
that we just put that dump body on. It's our main plow truck. Uh, in 2001, we paid $62,000 for that truck. That truck is, uh, I believe, one I just heard just got spec for 120. So it's already doubled. So when we go to replace that truck, we're looking at about 120 or so. Of course, that's plow and body and everything. So one truck, 120, and I think the F-350s, the 550s, average in that 75,000 fully outfitted. I'd, I, if, if it's possible, I'd like to see a turnout of what the fleet's like. Didn't you do that in December? Yeah, I, I did that in December with the uh, equipment um, sheets. In December, Mr. Kiko submitted council a vehicle report. Yep. You know, so um, we always allocate money every year in our budget to do maintenance of equipment. Um, and we have money allocated this year. And some of this stuff had already been fixed. Um, we're short staff. We had nine water brain breaks. So a lot of the uh, stuff that we could not control has taken precedence over fixing some of these vehicles. If you can put a floor plate on and cover up that hole and your engine is still going good, that's the route you need to look at. You know, when we're looking at taking 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars out of the water fund to buy that new car, that needs to really be budgeted in year in and year out. Um, I think we all agree we would love for our staff to be in brand new vehicles every four to five years uh, for our capital replacement placement program. We just, the city doesn't have the funds to do that um, unless you rely on your general fund. The water department has already had a loan from the general fund. Um, so I'm anticipating another loan from the general fund for a purchase of a new car next year if we don't have the funds out of the water department. So um, we agree that it needs to be done. We just have to have the best use of taxpayer money while keeping our employees safe. Um, but Mr. Kitko can update that sheet for you and we'll hand one out and give it to you so you have it. And then we'll take it from there, let him give you some quotes, and then um, plug that in to see if we can do anything this year. If not, we'll definitely have to put it in for a CIP purchase for next year. Count, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kick, uh, uh, <clears throat> roughly what would it cost to replace the floor pan in the F-350? We think it's probably going to be about 100 bucks um, to put that in. And it's riveted. We'd love to weld the thing yeah. in and make it all seamless. But it's going to be riveted in and then um, get all the pieces back in. So. Um, my mechanic, as a matter of fact, on Thursday or Friday, we've already discussed because um, he was doing steering linkage and I had to be down at the garage and saw in the blue pickup, not the one that uh, Mr. Lowry's talking about, but the blue pickup and we had discussed getting that one. It's in the corner right where your foot sits usually when it's resting. It's where its hole is. And I said we need to start looking at getting these filled back in just so someone goes to get in, they don't go through it, um, you know, when they're driving. I mean, nothing's going to kick up or anything like that but we were already discussing that and it's kind of coincidental that we're talking about it tonight i think if, if you're going to hold off for another year or so to replace it you probably ought to get that floor pan fixed but we, yeah, we're already working on that. that yeah we're already we're already working on that he, yeah he's looking up getting them all together all the vehicles that do need that those holes filled getting all those pans together okay all right thank you councilman camp mr lowry thank you mr mayor uh, i just wanted to reassure you guys i wasn't a suit or insinuating that mr kitko is not busy or not doing his job by any means i just wanted to make sure that sure everyone was aware that some of these vehicles are getting you know old i don't disagree with you at all <laughs> thank you oh i just want to say old, old. so I, I know i know he's busy and i, th I think one, i think 20 years is is you know no more than what it should probably be no stretched way. but yeah, if, if we patch them up this year, I'd love to see at least one or two of them, if possible, next year. I'd love to see that. So, thank you. Council, anything else? Nope. Mr. Yep. Bridge, back to you. All right, moving on with this uh, city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trust. Mayor, council, citizens. For the month of March, the New York Carlisle Fire Division responded to 83 EMS calls in the city, six in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 11 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Total run volume right now, as, uh, as of today, is right at 321 runs so far this year. Uh, we had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either Pike or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid uh, EMS calls for Pike Township, and we answered two uh, mutual aid EMS calls for Bethel Clark. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Print, that should be for the month of March, not October. Uh, for the month of March, the division responded to two overdose calls in the city. Mm. Uh, there's one other thing I'd like to bring up that's not on my report. Um, just I wanted to bring it up here because that way it's on record. 
Uh, after our last meeting, the last city council meeting where the council voted in approval of our raises for the, for the fire division, for the firefighters, it was placed on social media and it was picked up that the citizens were going to be asked to pay more taxes to support the fire department raises and it was never corrected on face on social media i wanted the citizens to know that that is not true the raises are being paid out of the levy that the citizens so graciously passed for us in november the department is not asking for any additional monies from the citizen to pay for our equipment or pay for our raises but i just wanted to let that be known and on record that they are being paid out of our levy monies, not out of asking for additional tax funds from the city. Council, anything else for the chief? No, thank you, Chief Trustee. Mr. Bridge. And moving on with the city manager report, our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and citizens. In March, the Nuclaw deputies were dispatched to 55 calls. And among those calls, assaults were at zero, domestic violence. There were 13, theft there was zero, non injury crash, three, uh, injury crash, we had none at the time. Uh, with citations, we had seven, drug complaints, we had zero, overdose, uh, our deputies were not on any of the overdoses, we had zero and suicide attempts one and burglary none. Then our new crop deputies are doing a great job patrolling the city and checking out our parks and the bike paths. Uh, they're doing visits with our businesses and making their presence well known. They've been checking the, laundry, the laundromat or in keeping the unwanted out. And we, this is a regular discussion, what I just talked about. And then Deputy Biceline is going to her training. She will be trained in all three shifts. During this time, the Clark County Sheriff's Department is covering our late night shift, and as always, the backup on deputies on all calls that we need backed upon. <clears throat> and again, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to solve a crime. And with that, I'll ask if anyone has any questions. Council, any questions? Hearing none, thank you. Sarge Underwood, okay. Mr. Bridge. Uh, before we go on, uh, Mr. Kicko, will I get an update that was not added to his report? Okay. Thank you. Um, gov deals. We uh, had some vehicles that were on for the last three weeks. We did sell um, all the cruisers, the Jeep Cherokee, and all but the red pickup truck that we had bought used some years ago uh, because of a wild bid. We had to re auction the thing. Because it went way over what we expected. If they asked us if we thought we'd get that kind of money, and it was just no way. So, other than it being re auctioned, everything will be picked up uh, hopefully by all but one this Wednesday. And we'll be picked up next week and we'll get the rest of the equipment on. Fantastic. But yeah, the water plant's looking a little cleaner down there now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Mr. Bridge. <coughs> Excuse me. And moving, thank you, Mr. Kaplan. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items. Uh, new building updates. Uh, we now have keys to the building. That's exciting. Um, the next step is we will wait uh, for the design to be completed by the architect, and that will tell us how we need to proceed with our next step. Um, I did actually meet him on site today. I did give him a key so he can come and go as he pleases because he'll be in and out um, quite a bit over the next couple weeks. Um, I did ask him for a tentative date of when we can get that first design review back. He said anywhere from two to three weeks. So that's actually a lot sooner than I thought he was going to say, so I am happy about that. Yeah. So as soon as we get that first design, I will definitely share with council, and it will be a group effort with the citizens and us, and we'll just review that first sketch, see if he like it or not. We'll probably make some cuts and then take it back to him. So once we get that process done, and that's going to tell us our next steps as far as that bidding process, we're looking at a what we call source well project where we don't have to go out to bid. We just use state contract contractor that's already been approved so that kind of shortens that, that time period so you don't have to put it out for bid um, so really right now we're just waiting for the architect to get done with that initial design review uh, but again we do have the keys to the building uh, we're very excited about how it's going to play out um, fireworks display <coughs> update please put me on this I wrote this city manager report on Friday with every intention and in executing that firework agreement today well I still did not like some of the things that kind of slipped through the cracks on the uh, uh, contract 
So I am in contact with them. Um, hopefully they get back with me in the next day or two um, uh, to see if they will honor those changes on those contracts. But I'm really just trying to protect the city um, with, with some rain, down, rain date options and uh, we don't need, get, we, so we won't be on the hook for the entire show if we can't have it on those one or two dates. So that's some of the language I'm working out in that contract. As soon as I feel as though it's safe enough for the city to proceed, we will execute that agreement. Uh, VIP analytics training, Ms. Watson has already stated that we are done with that. Um, I will be working on the final budget presentation utilizing the new software. We're waiting to get done with that training. But also like Ms. Watson said, it is a great tool to have. Um, it creates all these kinds of graphs, all the stuff that I like to do when I make that final budget to give it to council. The budget itself is already been approved but we like to make it in a nice professional format, put it in a little folder, and then send it all out to council members and keep a copy at the city building for the public to look. So that's what I'm gonna wait and uh, work with our new software on. Madison Street School, uh, please keep this on your radar, council and uh, the citizens. That is something that's um, still waiting on some information to come back. So once we have all that information, we will be getting together as a group and discussing the Madison Street School. Uh, 2019 community garage sale. I've already, I've already got a few calls on this, so I decided to go ahead and put it on the city manager report. Um, last year, I put a Facebook poll out, um, gauging when people wanted to have this. We're going to try to have it at the same time every single year. So it was like 84, 84 to 20 something percent that people wanted on the fourth weekend of June every single year. So that year, June has this year, June has five weeks in it. It is June 22nd to 23rd is a community garage sale weekend. Uh, 2019 taxpayer assistance session uh, held on March 23rd at the fire station. We had about 35 taxpayers attend that event uh, and it actually resulted in about 40 tax returns being processed. Um, approximately seven of those in attendance asked for assistance by a Spanish speaker to prepare their CCA uh, tax reform. Um, a big thanks to our tax administrator who, to, who was present and also with CCA for hosting such an event. It was a success this year. Flag raising ceremony uh, organized by Mayor Reynolds and Stephanie Willis. It was held Thursday, April 11th at the fire station. Um, U.S. Representative Warren Davidson, David's son, was our special guest. Uh, the flag that was raised actually flew over the U.S. Capitol, so we had a plaque made to commer commemorate that. Uh, it was made by Sign Smith here in town. I was present, it was a great event, so hats off to uh, you and Stephanie for getting that event created. It was fantastic. Her idea, not mine. Hey. Absolutely. Uh, and for those of you who take part in our clinic hours, I please pay attention to this. They are changing their hours effective May 1st, 2019. So the first Tuesday monthly will be from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, the first Thursday monthly, January through June, is 8 a.m. to noon. And then the first and third Thursday, July through December, is 8 a.m. to noon. So uh, I have attached some handouts here. Um, they are available. I posted these on the city's Facebook page as well. So if you wanted to print a copy off from there, they are actually on that website as well. But if you do take advantage of that or know anyone who does, please let them know of the new hours. I do believe that is all I have for my city manager report. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, anything for city manager Bridge? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bridge, moving on. Comments from members of the public, please limit comments to five minutes or less. You'll be next. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. Um, I noticed recently that uh, some of you were at the food bank for the presentation of the check that was a donation from the city. But I was wondering, um, Mr. Lowry, Mr. Shammy, Mr. Cook, and Mr. Cobb, were you aware of this presentation or were you invited to it? Mr. Cook? I was not aware of it, no, Peggy, not at the time. Mr. Cobb? I wasn't made aware of it either. Mr. Lowry? No, I was not aware of it. Mr. Shammy? I was at work. Okay. Um, Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay, why were not the rest of the council made aware of this presentation? That was my oversight and I accept full responsibility for it. Why was the New Carlisle News not they made aware of it, but the Springfield paper was? They were called. Called Mr. Graham. Uh, yeah, 
give me a second. Actually, because I thought this would be coming up, I made sure to actually do this. Give me one second. I call. Oops. I called at New Coral Avenue's 1216 p.m. that day. The day of the presentation. Just like with the Springfield New Sun. Okay. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Graham. Dale Graham, 114 South Main Street. At a previous meeting, I announced that we would be, <coughs> excuse me, sponsoring a Meet the Candidates Night on Wednesday, May 1st. We encountered a scheduling conflict with one of the candidates. So in order to accommodate that candidate, we have moved it to Thursday, May 2nd, 7 p.m. right here. Um, the only thing on the ballot for a city residence is the city council race. Uh, both candidates have been invited and have confirmed that they will attend. Uh, we hope everybody comes. Uh, we will give the public the uh, public that attends opportunities to ask questions too. Thanks. Thank you. Ma'am, do you mind going back and saying your name and your address, please? <laughs> uh, my name is Haley Hammonds and I live at 200 Drake. Oh, sorry. I'm Haley Hammonds and I live at 200 Drake Avenue. Um, my main thing is our greenhouse emissions. I was wondering um, if anybody knew how much we were emitting, and um, I have a couple of ideas on how we could lower them. Council, um. I, I will. We, we've talked about it, you know, twice now. I honestly, said I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would like to know, like, Mr. Bridge, that's something that we could possibly look into, figure out, like, what our emissions may be. I, I don't know about how to do that. But. I have no idea. Okay. I, we don't not, know. I don't mean to look dumbfounded. I, I, yeah, I really don't know. I have no idea. Oh, EPA? The yeah. start? However, could we, is there some way, I was going to bring this up, but I'm happy that you're here. Is there any way that we could uh, maybe going about looking into certain like clean energy aspects for our city? Like, you know, instead of using uh, like, using energy efficient bulbs and things like that. Do we already do that sort of thing? I mean, the best of our ability, yeah. We switch okay. a lot of things out to LED and stuff. Could we use something like biomass since we have so many uh, fields? What is it called? Uh, biomass is something that we use to uh, burn organic uh, material mm -hmm. to fuel just like you would in a coal generator, like where you would burn coal, use the steam in the turbine, which would turn the wheels of the turbine and mm -hmm. then generate the electricity or other energy source that you're using. But since biomass is organic material, I figured since we have so many fields around here and it is renewable since we are replanting, it's more uh, clean mm -hmm. because we'd be burning plants and then regrowing more plants to clean the All of our city vehicles, and I was, and I was hoping that would have been put into the budget of the CIP. And I'll, and I'll be honest, and I'll take partial blame. I totally forgot about some of these vehicles getting put in there. And then when I'd seen this truck again, uh, it just, you know, I, I wouldn't expect any of our deputies to be in a, in a vehicle that has a hole in the floorboard or, or any of the other city workers. I don't know uh, the status of all of our vehicles, but I know a couple of the some of the ones that are more serious, like that one. Um, you know, I think it's an F-350. Am I correct? Correct, and, and that one also gets used for plowing as well? Uh, it does not. No, it it used to. We okay. just don't really use it anymore for that. Okay. So I looked up, you know, and you know, some of the 350s and a new one, ballpark, and I don't know if the city gets any breaks on anything like that or not, um, around $40,000. Uh, I know that's a, that's a little chunk of money, but I just feel that, you know, when we're putting fireworks up in the sky and things like that, which we can, we can play that game all day long. We, there's many areas that we could use improvement on, but I just don't feel right sitting up here knowing someone in the city is driving around with a hole in their floorboard. And I would like to see what we can do to get it fixed as soon as possible. Not fixed, as in replaced. Well, that's something that should have been brought up for our CIP. I agree. Take and, 40, and especially out of the street departments, which are run pretty thin from year to year. Um, 
it's something that we'll have to open up the budget if council is adamant about buying a whole new vehicle. I'm sure when Howie takes these into consideration, you look at the body of that car. Clearly, there's probably a floor in the whole board, but the car may run well. Um, so we may be able to fix that hole if the actual car is running very well. But I will let Howie take this over. It's his department. He knows way more about the cars than I do. Um, You're right about us trying to stretch. The, and the you do, and that's a good thing, but I think at a certain point it becomes, you know, it needs to be taken care of. Um, we can um, get that fixed um, with a new floor pan. It is not going to be perfect. As you know, once rust starts, it, it goes. You have to cut the whole thing out. Uh, anything that's rust, you can't weld the rust, so you've got to get it way back. It also does need cap corners and rocker panels, which for anyone knows, that's everything along the bottom part of the door and the back cap corners. The bed has been replaced on it. The dump bed was replaced, I think, five years ago. We redid that in the boxes. So the chassis, the engine, and the, everything is good, but the cab is starting to rust out on it. Um, I can probably get it a little, uh, probably to get try to get another year out of it, to be honest with you. Uh, a full spec out truck is going to be close to about seventy-five to 90000 That's the chassis that you saw. I can get the chassis on state bid. And then when you get the dump body, plow, and get the hydraulics installed, that's where it gets pricey. Mm -hmm. um, so when I get, I can actually spec one out through the state bid um, and bring those numbers back to you to see what a new, because that is Waters truck. That truck is um, one of the two main ones they use for water main brakes outside of the big one. So I can go. No, it's get, not a street one. It's not a street car. Not that one. It's not that one. Now it's water department. Okay. And I can go get one spec'd out. It's pretty easy. I can go right through the state and it, get the out the door package, lights, belt, all the stuff on it. If we, if we had just gotten the, the bed for that one a few years back, I mean, can it not be transferred over to a new vehicle? No, the Fords have changed, the chassis have changed um, through model years. Okay. So, yeah, even the, the bed that we got on our new IH that you guys had allowed us to purchase, that 13000 for our IH bed, it was hard finding that bed to fit on an IH from 2001. Okay. So yeah, some things some things are a little harder because chassis or the beds come with subframes, and not all chassis are the same. They keep changing the bodies. Okay, uh, I think in your report, if I remember, it said that that truck, along with the one at the cemetery, were constantly breaking down and losing power and, and constant maintenance. So I mean, you think it's best to wait another year for that? Uh, let me let me spec it out. We maintenance on it. Um, when I say constant maintenance, that's you know we might have some belts. Um, We'll increase the oil changes on it. Um, just, you know, steering linkage is starting to go. I mean, things like that. Um, Engine-wise, has, has not been an issue, other than it is getting old. It's a 2001. It doesn't have the horsepower and torque it did 19, uh, 19 years, 18 years ago. Right. So, um, let me spec one out. Obviously, we can keep a truck running super long, but then it just becomes inefficient to run. Yeah. Okay, so depending on if you're going to get a price on one, and depending on you know what what council and everyone else feels about it, I mean, but as of right now, you, your thoughts are regardless. Let's say if we don't get one, you were thinking about replacing it next year. I, I had some I had some ideas because I do have some trucks that are really starting to degrade, like the pickup truck in uh, Street Department. Right. It's got the same situation. It is. It's starting to. All these parts break and you got to replace them still drives it still hauls things in the bed of it but it's getting the same way and, and these vehicles are 18 well it would be going on 19 years old because some of them are 2000 and some are 2001s mm -hmm. and that's i mean even at 19 i mean you see some trucks or vehicles out on the road that are still in great shape but i mean when you're getting or getting abused like i'm sure they do here not from misuse but just from city work so and, and please if anybody looks at uh, you'll see a lot of these dealers and um, have a used one, say it's probably five years old, unless it has a stainless body, they're getting rid of it usually for some reason. So we're real hesitant on not going with a used dump truck with hydraulics and depends on model year of diesels. Some had issues. We're well aware of what model years we go for and things like that, so. Okay, so we can, you can get us a, a build price though, just so we kind of know what we're looking at? I can, I can get you a build price, yeah. Okay, great. Good. Does it for me. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Kiko, if, if we're getting that bad of vehicles, I think we need to go through all of our fleet and equipment. You, you, you talked about how the boom truck's bad. You know, we, we just need to pull everything out and go through it. Everything goes, you mean just in like uh, 
pulled out to go to look for replacement? Or are you talking about pulled out to just because it, well, it we need we need to have an understanding what's bad in this fleet. Because I mean you've got several trucks here saying that the floorboard's gone, the bed's still good. And that is that's numerous. That is probably seventy five percent of our fleet is very similar to that condition. I didn't know that. Well, that's something we need to look into because in the wintertime you've got exhaust fumes coming up through the hole in the floorboards. I don't feel like burying any. We don't have issues with those because our exhaust systems are tailed out the back. So we don't have exhaust issues with ours. But I, I'm well familiar with you. I've been a mechanic for 20 years, so I'm real, real familiar with that. And we don't have any issues with ours on those. But um, yeah, I mean, if I had the dollars, I just was telling Mr. Bridge that the 2001 IH, our big uh, dump truck, that we just put that dump body on, it's our main plow truck. Uh, in 2001, we paid $62,000 for that truck. That truck is, uh, I believe, one I just heard just got spec for 120. So it's already doubled. So when we go to replace that truck, we're looking at about 120 or so. Of course, that's plow and body and everything. So one truck, 120, and I think the F-350s, the 550s average in that 75,000 fully outfitted. I'd, I, if, if it's possible, I'd like to see a turn out of what the fleet's like. Then you do that in December. Kappa. Yeah, I, I did that in December with the uh, equipment um, sheets. In December, Mr. Kiko submitted council a vehicle report. Yep. You know, so um, we always allocate money every year in our budget to do maintenance of equipment. Um, and we have money allocated this year. And some of this stuff had already been fixed. Um, we're short staff. We had nine water brain breaks. So a lot of the uh, stuff that we could not control has taken precedence over fixing some of these vehicles. If you can put a floor plate on, and cover up that hole and your engine is still going good, that's the route you need to look at. You know, when we're looking at taking 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars out of the water fund to buy that new car, that needs to really be budgeted in year in and year out. Um, I think we all agree we would love for our staff to be in brand new vehicles every four to five years uh, for our capital replacement placement program. We just, the city doesn't have the funds to do that um, unless you rely on your general fund. The water department has already have a loan from the general fund. Um, so I'm anticipating another loan from the general fund for a purchase of a new car next year if we don't have the funds out of the water department. So um, we agree that it needs to be done. We just have to have the best use of taxpayer money while keeping our employees safe. Um, but Mr. Kitko can update that sheet for you and we'll hand one out and give it to you so you have it. And then we'll take it from there, let him give you some quotes and then um, <coughs> plug that in to see if we can do anything this year. If not, we'll definitely have to put it in for a CIP purchase for next year. Count, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kick, uh, uh, roughly what would it cost to replace the floor pan in the F-350? We think it's probably going to be about 100 bucks um, to put that in. And it's riveted. We'd love to weld the thing yeah. in and make it all seamless. But it's going to be riveted in and then um, get all the pieces back in. So um, my mechanic, as a matter of fact, on Thursday or Friday, we've already discussed um, because he was doing steering linkage and I had to be down at the garage and saw in the blue pickup, not the one that uh, Mr. Lowry's talking about, but the blue pickup and we had discussed getting that one. It's in the corner right where your foot sits usually when it's resting. It's where its hole is. And I said, we need to start looking at getting these filled back in just so someone goes to get in, they don't go through it. Um, you know, when they're driving, I mean, nothing's gonna kick up or anything like that, but we were already discussing that and it's kind of coincidental that we're talking about it tonight. I think if, if you're going to hold off for another year or so to replace it, you probably ought to get that floor pan fixed. But we, yeah, we're already working on that. Yeah, we're already we're already working on that. He, yeah, he's looking up getting them all together, all the vehicles that do need that those holes filled, getting all those pans together. Okay. All right, thank you. Councilman Camp. Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to reassure you guys. I wasn't suit or insinuating that Mr. Kitko is not busy or not doing his job by any means. I just wanted to make sure that sure. everyone was aware that some of these vehicles are getting, you know, old. I don't disagree with you at all. <laughs> Thank you, old. I just want to say old. old. So I, I, know, I know he's busy, and I, th I, think, 20, I think 20 years is, is you know, no more than what it should probably be no stretched. One. But, okay. yeah, if, if we patch them up this year, I'd love to see at least one or two of them, if possible, next year. I'd love to see that. So, Thank you. Council, anything else? Nope, Mr. Bridge, back to you. All right, moving on with the uh, city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. 
Mayor, Council, Citizens. For the month of March, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 83 EMS calls in the city, six in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 11 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Total run volume right now as, uh, as of today is right at 321 runs so far this year. Uh, we had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either Pike or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid uh, EMS calls for Pike Township, and we answered two uh, mutual aid EMS calls for Bethel Clark. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Prent, that should be for the month of March, not October. Uh, for the month of March, the division responded to two overdose calls in the city. Mm. Uh, there's one other thing I'd like to bring up that's not on my report. Um, just I wanted to bring it up here because that way it's on record. Uh, after our last meeting, the last city council meeting where the council voted in approval of our raises for the, for the fire division, for the firefighters, it was placed on social media and it was picked up that the citizens were going to be asked to pay more taxes to support the fire department raises and it was never corrected on face on social media i wanted the citizens to know that that is not true the raises are being paid out of the levy that the citizens so graciously passed for us in november the department is not asking for any additional monies from the citizen to pay for our equipment or pay for our raises but i just wanted to let that be known and on record that they are being paid out of our levy monies, not out of asking for additional tax funds from the city. Council, anything else for the chief? No, nope. thank you. Chief Trustee, Mr. Bridge. And moving on with the city manager report, our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and citizens. In March, the nuclear deputies were dispatched to 55 calls. Among those calls, assaults were at zero, domestic violence. There were 13, theft were zero, non-injury crash, three, uh, injury crash, we had none at the time. Uh, citations, we had seven, drug complaints, we had zero. Overdose, uh, our deputies were not on any of the overdoses, we had zero and suicide attempts one and burglary none. Then our new crop deputies are doing a great job patrolling the city and checking out our parks and the bike paths. Uh, they're doing visits with our businesses and making the presence well known. They've been checking the, laundry, the laundromat or in keeping the unwanted out. And we, this is a regular discussion, what I just talked about. And then Deputy Bicelein is going through her training. She will be trained in all three shifts. During this time, the Clark County Sheriff's Department is covering our late night shift. And as always, the backup on our deputies on all calls that we need backed upon. <clears throat> and again, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560. If you witness anything suspicious, this could be the phone call we need to solve a crime. And with that, I'll ask if anyone has any questions. Council, any questions? Hearing none, thank you. Sarge Underwood, okay. Mr. Bridge. Uh, before we go on, uh, Mr. Kicko, will, will I get an update that was not added to his report? Okay. Thank you. Um, gov deals. We uh, had some vehicles that were on for the last three weeks. We did sell um, all the cruisers, the Jeep Cherokee, and all but the red pickup truck that we had bought used some years ago uh, because of a wild bid. We had to re-auction the thing. Because it went way over what we expected. If they asked us if we thought we'd get that kind of money, and it was just no way. So, other than it being re auctioned, everything will be picked up uh, hopefully by all but one this Wednesday. It will be picked up next week, and we'll get the rest of the equipment on. Fantastic. But yeah, the water plant's looking a little cleaner down there now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Mr. Bridge. <coughs> Excuse me. And moving, thank you, Mr. Kaper. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items. Uh, new building updates. Uh, we now have keys to the building. That's exciting. Um, the next step is we will wait uh, for the design to be completed by the architect, and that will tell us how we need to proceed with our next step. Um, I did actually meet him on site today. I did give him a key so he can come and go as he pleases because he'll be in and out um, quite a bit over the next couple weeks. Um, I did ask him for a tentative date of when we can get that first design review back. He said anywhere from two to three weeks. 
So that's actually a lot sooner than I thought he was going to say, so I am happy about that. Yeah. So as soon as we get that first design, I will definitely share with council and it will be a group effort with the citizens and us. And we'll just review that first sketch, if you like it or not. We'll probably make some cuts and then take it back to him. So once we get that process done, and that's going to tell us our next steps as far as that bidding process. We're looking at a what we call source well project where we don't have to go out to bid. We just use state contract contractor that's already been approved so that kind of shortens that, that time period so you don't have to put it out for bid um, so really right now we're just waiting for the architect to get done with that initial design review uh, but again we do have the keys to the building uh, we're very excited about how it's going to play out um, fireworks <coughs> play update please put me on this I wrote this city manager report on Friday with every intention and executing that firework agreement today well I still did not like some of the things that kind of slipped through the cracks on the uh, uh, contract so I am in contact with them. Um, hopefully they get back with me in the next day or two um, uh, to see if they will honor those changes on those contracts. But I'm really just trying to protect the city um, with, with some rain, rain date options and uh, we don't need, get, we, so we won't be on the hook for the entire show if we can't have it on those one or two dates. So that's some of the language I'm working out in that contract. As soon as I feel as though it's safe enough for the city to proceed, we will execute that agreement. Uh, VIP analytics training, Ms. Watson has already stated that we are done with that. Um, I will be working on the final budget presentation utilizing the new software. We're waiting to get done with that training. But also, like Ms. Watson said, it is a great tool to have. Um, it creates all these kinds of graphs, all the stuff that I like to do when I make that final budget to give it to council. The budget itself is already been approved, but we like to make it in a nice professional format, put it in a little folder, and then send it all out to council members and keep a copy at the city building for the public to look. So that's what I'm going to wait and uh, work with our new software on. Madison Street School, uh, please keep this on your radar, council and uh, the citizens. That is something that's um, still waiting on some information to come back. So once we have all that information, we will be getting together as a group and discussing the Madison Street School. Uh, 2019 Community Garage Sale, I've already, I've already got a few calls on this, so I decided to go ahead and put it on the city manager report. Um, last year I put a Facebook poll out, um, gauging when people wanted to have this. We're going to try to have it at the same time every single year. So it was like 84, 84 to 20 something percent that people wanted on the fourth weekend of June every single year. So that year, June has, this year, June has five weeks in it. It is June 22nd to 23rd is a community garage sale weekend. Uh, 2019 taxpayer assistance session uh, held on March 23rd at the fire station. We had about 35 taxpayers attend that event, uh, and it actually resulted in about 40 tax returns being processed. Um, approximately seven of those in attendance asked for assistance by a Spanish speaker to prepare their CCA uh, tax reform. Um, a big thanks to our tax administrator who, to, who was present and also with CCA for hosting such an event. It was a success this year. Flag raising ceremony uh, organized by Mayor Reynolds and Stephanie Willis. It was held Thursday, April 11th at the fire station. Um, U.S. Representative Warren Davidson, David's son, was our special guest. Uh, the flag that was raised actually flew over the U.S. Capitol, so we had a plaque made to commemorate that. Uh, it was made by Sign Smith here in town. I was present. It was a great event, so hats off to uh, you and Stephanie for getting that event created. It was fantastic. Her idea, not mine. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and for those of you who take part in our clinic hours, I please pay attention to this. They are changing their hours effective May 1st, 2019. So the first Tuesday monthly will be from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, the first Thursday monthly, January through June, is 8 a.m. to noon. And then the first and third Thursday, July through December, is 8 a.m. to noon. So uh, I have attached some handouts here. Um, they are available. I posted these on the city's Facebook page as well. So if you wanted to print a copy off from there, they are actually on that website as well. But if you do take advantage of that or know anyone who does, please let them know of the new hours. I do believe that is all I have for my city manager report. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, anything for city manager Bridge? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bridge, moving on. Comments from members of the public, please limit comments to five minutes or less. You'll be next. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. Um, I noticed recently that uh, some of you were at the food bank for the presentation of the check that was a donation from the city. 
but I was wondering, um, Mr. Lowry, Mr. Shammy, Mr. Cook, and Mr. Cobb, were you aware of this presentation or were you invited to it? Mr. Cook? I was not aware of it, no, Maggie, not at the time. Mr. I wasn't made aware of it either. Mr. Lowry? No, I was not aware of it. Mr. Shammy? I was at work. Okay. Um, Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay, why were not the rest of the council made aware of this presentation? That was my oversight, and I accept full responsibility for it. Why was the New Carlisle News not they made aware of it, but the Springfield paper was? They were called. Called Mr. Graham. Uh, yeah, give me a second. Actually, because I thought this would be coming up, I made sure to actually do this. Give me one second. I call I called at New Carlisle News 1216 PM that day. The day of the presentation. Just like with the Springfield News Sun. Okay. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Grimm. Dale Graham, 114 South Main Street. At a previous meeting, I announced that we would be, <coughs> excuse me, sponsoring a Meet the Candidates Night on Wednesday, May 1st. We encountered a scheduling conflict with one of the candidates. So in order to accommodate that candidate, we have moved it to Thursday, May 2nd, 7 p.m. right here. Um, the only thing on the ballot for a city residence is the city council race. Uh, both candidates have been invited and have confirmed that they will attend. Uh, we hope everybody comes. Uh, we will give the public, the uh, public that attends, opportunities to ask questions too. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Do you mind going back and saying your name and your address, please? <laughs> Uh, my name is Haley Hammonds, and I live at 200 Drake. Oh, sorry. I'm Haley Hammonds, and I live at 200 Drake Avenue. Um, my main thing is our greenhouse emissions. I was wondering um, if anybody knew how much we were emitting, and um, I have a couple of ideas on how we could lower them. Council. I will, we, we've talked about it, you know, twice now. I honestly, like I said, I don't know. I would like to know, like, Mr. Bridge, that's something that we could possibly look into, figure out, like, what our emissions may be. I don't know about how to do that. I have no idea. Okay. I, we don't not, know. I don't mean to look dumbfounded. I, I, yeah, I really don't know. I have no idea. Oh, EPA to yeah. start? However, could we, is there some way, I was going to bring this up, but I'm happy that you're here. Is there any way that we could, uh, maybe going about looking into certain like clean energy aspects for our city, like, you know, instead of using, uh, like using energy efficient bulbs and things like that. Do we already do that sort of thing? I mean, the best of our ability, yeah, we switch a lot of things out to LED and stuff. Could we use something like biomass since we have so many uh, fields? What is it called? Uh, biomass is something that we, used to uh, burn organic uh, material mm -hmm. to fuel just like you would in a coal generator, like where you would burn coal, use the steam in the turbine, which would turn the wheels of the turbine and mm -hmm. then generate the electricity or other energy source that you're using. But since biomass is organic material, I figured since we have so many fields around here and it is renewable since we are replanting, it's more uh, clean mm -hmm. because we'd be burning plants and then regrowing more plants to clean the air that we. Sure. Uh, I think that's a great thing for one of the council members to help her out with. Now, I will say when it comes to the plant based, like the field stuff, our city don't have a lot of fields and we only deal with the city limits. So once you get out to the township areas mm -hmm. and, the, and that, that's where all the agriculture stuff is, we couldn't say, hey, we're in New Carlisle, we're going to put this in your field in a township that we have no jurisdiction off of. Then you have a private property question coming into play when someone owns their personal property. I don't know much about 
much of what, what anything about what you've said as far as the details on it and stuff like that. So um, if someone wants to give some information to the administration, we'll gladly look at it. All right, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I will make sure to look into it for you, like I said. And like, I, I didn't know if there's other, like, I know we don't have, we're not, you know, a state, so we don't have all the, these resources. Yeah. There's things we can probably do to minimize our footprint if possible. You know, like you just said, we're using energy efficient bulbs and maybe some more things yeah. of that nature. Half off too, I think that's really outside the box thinking and it's it's never been brought to me. Have you ever heard some? Yeah, super, hats off to you for that. I just don't know much about it. Yeah, neither do <laughs> yeah, I. It, it was, I found it super right. interesting. It is super so. interesting, yeah. That's cool. All right. Thank you so much, Kayla. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Now, uh, if I can add something else, with yes. the new building, like our, the new city building we're doing, I actually, uh, Andy's our DPNL representative for our community. Um, I am looking to heavily switch everything out to more energy efficient. And our city building too, we had um, recently put some LED lighting in. So any any time that we have that ability to do that, we definitely take what I call low hanging fruit when we put this, you know, the low stuff in. When it comes to the more complicated stuff though, I, I don't know much about it. Yeah, it definitely Yeah. Well, it is, and some of them in smaller places are the easiest ones to get it started, too. So I, I applaud your efforts on that. That's really outside the box thinking. So good job, Mr. Flower. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kitko, on the same subject, are we? I know we've talked about it a few times over the years. Are are we? You know, with LED bulbs, you know, good LED bulbs are still pretty pricey. Are we, do you ever see us for, in the future, see us switching our, our street lights over to LED yet anytime? I mean, I mean, I know there's pros and cons there with that because they don't, they don't get as hot, so they don't dry the, the head out for when it snows and whatnot. So, some come with heaters with them and some do, the drivers that drive an LED bulb usually are getting hot enough. We've been in discussions with, uh, uh, Miami Valley Lighting about uh, conversion of LEDs um, for our decorative and for our street lights. Um, so yeah, we've already been looking into that okay. that, that capital improvement item. Okay. Um, real quick, I'd like to add uh, between myself, City of Springfield, Clark County, we for quite a few years now have been looking into uh, propane uh, vehicles. Our problem with New Carlisle over here is having a refueling station for propane. Mm. There's not a close one, so. I've never went after a propane, you know, you can get propane, uh, Clark County has two, but they have a refueling station for the county in Springfield. They just have so many vehicles that it's worth that worth them getting a uh, bulk refueling station put on site for them to use. So we've been looking at propane just like uh, trash trucks that use that. Um, almost every trash truck is almost on a clean energy now. Mm -hmm. hmm. Never knew that. Yeah. Interesting. Council, anything else? Comments? Hearing none. Committee reports none. Mrs. Burner. Okay. Resolutions. Our first resolution this evening, resolution 19-07R, introduction public hearing and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a letter of agreement and receipt of equipment with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the receipt of Mark's radios and pagers. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept resolution 17 07R. 19. 1907. <laughs> Second, Mr. Shammy. And an explanation of this resolution. A couple years back, we switched our uh, fire and EMS dispatching from the um, city of Springfield to Clark County uh, Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Clark County commissioners have decided to purchase a bunch of what we call Mark's radios that our uh, fire safety personnel uses. And they have agreed to let us use those free of charge, um, as far as free of charge, as far as not purchasing them. We will definitely have some uh, monthly fees to pay um, and then also some programming fees. But this resolution uh, actually uh, allows me to sign the agreement that says we are going to receive these radios. And with that agreement has a list of what we're getting and it's going to be 20 marks portable radios, five marks mobile radios, and 50 marks pagers. All right, council, any questions? Hearing not, Mr. Cobb. 
Mr. Bridge, I noticed down here for the repair of $10 per pager, $50 per, radio, per radio. Are you talking on the agreement? Pardon? On the letter of agreement? Yeah. Okay. What number, sir? He's talking on the front page. I'll on the back page here. Oh, on the ordinance. Okay. He's on the, not on the agreement, but in the ordinance. I mean, it says the city will be responsible for the $10 per pager. Yes, per month. Per month. That is not, that does not include the pager, correct? Correct. That is just that the is, That's not a maintenance fee. The $10 is a user fee paid to marks themselves, marks for us transmitting on the mark system. The pagers do not have a, a monthly fee because they do not transmit. What I'm trying to get at, should that not come out of the fire fund instead of the city general fund? No, it, it will come out of the fire fund. It comes out. Of the oh, we'll make sure of that. It, it will. We've budgeted for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just way it's important that yeah, it's coming sure. out of the general fund. No. Sure, sure. No, we budgeted for that. With the savings that we're saving from switching from the city of Springfield to the county for dispatching fees, we saved over right at fifteen thousand dollars a year, which will more than cover all of our user fees for Mark's radios. Yeah. Man, I'm not trying to. Oh, I know. I just want to let you know. Put hard to you. From. I just just the way it was ordered. Yeah. Got to figure it out, man. Council, any other comments? Hearing none. Right. Mr. Mr. Lowry. What do you think? <laughs> Mike, now you got. He said it. yes. <laughs> no pressure. Cobb. Yes. <laughs> no pressure. Mr. Cook. Yes. It's been funny Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> Mayor yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Six zero. <laughs> Moving on. Resolution nineteen zero eight R. Introduction. Public hearing and action tonight. <laughs> A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the testing and alignment of public radios. Council. Mr. Mayor, make a recommendation that we approve 19-08R. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bridge, would like to? Who was the first, Mr. Cobb? Mr. Cobb, then Mr. Lindsay. An explanation to this ordinance, this actually just piggies back off the one they just <coughs> approved excuse me for us to get them um, and this says that uh, the MOU is like every now uh, at least every two years we have to send them back to them for them to get retuned and aligned and that's what this ordinance uh, resolution <coughs> Council, any questions? <coughs> Mr. Lindsay Mr. Bridge any yes, uh, or maybe the chief would, would know any idea how long it would take them to retune those and get them back in service to us? Retune them, it's, it's a minor, it, it's basically like putting a computer on something, running a status check, it cleans up any any quirks and it's just like rebooting a computer. Uh, it's turnaround time is very, very minimal. Okay. And the way the county is basically trying to set this program up is, say my handheld goes bad, I take my handheld in, give it to them, they give me a loaner handheld until mine's fixed and swap it back out. Oh. All right, thank you sir. Council. <clears throat> Mrs. Burner. Okay. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Great. Moving on, ordinances. We have one intro this evening. Ordinance 19 08, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on May 6, 2019. An ordinance authorizing the leasing of Gastineau Baseball Field, property of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, to the New Carlisle Diamondbacks Adult Baseball Club. All right, thank you. Other business, Congressman Warren Davids <coughs> will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month at 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Prime Watch, Wednesday, May 8th at 6.30 p.m. here at the Smith Park Shelter House. City offices will be closed, closed on Good Friday, April the 19th. Our intergovernmental meeting will be held April 29th at 6.30 p.m. at the Bethel Township Building. Council, anything for other business? Mr. Don't, are you going to adjourn? I just was going to say something. Oh, adjourn. go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kiko, I had to bring something up. I don't want to start a whole new conversation tonight, but it was too funny and kind of entertaining and 
Who knows, maybe it could work and I had to tell it. If it has anything to do with my pants and jacket, we're not having the conference. No, no, that's, that's old news. <laughs> that's, that's, Can you just stand up, we're up, up we're No, I will not. No, we're good. Uh, I, I, I spoke to uh, Jim Bobo last weekend and, and you know, Mr. Kate goes, you know, and, and like I said, I don't want to get a whole conversation going because we got a lot to do tonight, but uh, you know, the, the conversation about the Adams water tower. So Jim Bobo comes up to me and he says, I have got the best idea in the world that it will bring so much revenue to the city that oh. you'll have all new streets. I'm like, well, spill it, I gotta hear this. He's like, okay, Las Vegas has got the space needle. Okay. He's like, you cut out big windows on the top half of the tower, <laughs> bring up some ladders or, or an elevator, the best you know, scenic restaurant known for its great water in the city of New Carolina. <laughs> so, All right. You know, maybe something to look into. Is Mr. Bobo going to fund that? Uh, we can always talk about it. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> that's, uh, funny. that's all I had, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, one thing I had real fast, uh, Mr. Cook, I made sure to write it down here. I spoke to uh, Mr. Lowry and Mr. Cook over the past week uh, about hosting an egg hunt for this Saturday. Uh, we had already talked, I spoke to those two um, already. Uh, they were supportive of the, of, the, of the initial thought of the idea. Uh, I think that we should definitely do it. Uh, we reached out to the New Carl Elementary School and they said they would be willing to allow us to use their field and they would, Mr. Bridge, correct me if I'm wrong, they would waive the fee. Is that they right? They'd raise a rental fee. We might have a little uh, fee to, for insurance, insurance purposes. Yeah. But the actual fee to rent. Like 20 space. bucks or something. Something right? like that, yeah. yeah. So I don't know how the rest of the council thought. Mr. Cook, would you like to chime in on this? No, I think it's a great situation. No, if we can do it. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Lowry, you have anything? Yes, to and to be all honest and serious, Mr. Jacob here uh, said that uh, the, the one, and when, seriously, when he had said it, I was wondering, with us, it was kind of a short, you know, I think it kind of hit you at the last minute. It did. Um, will, do you think it'll be, too soon to, I mean, too late to get get a good, because he said that, uh, would you say Park Lane's gonna be doing one? Yeah. Yes. At the, on the same day, so I, I'm all for it. I think, you know, obviously kids is a great thing, so I just, uh, you know, hopefully we have a good turnout for yeah. it. Yeah, I think it'll be our first year, you know? And we can, can do, we, a, do a trial run. Right. And do, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. I think doing a trial run would be something good to see. You know, we'll, we can gauge it. We can, you know, obviously plan better in the future. Uh, I just thought it was a really interesting and neat idea to do. I know Park Lane will have theirs the same day at the Medway Church, and they had 20,000 eggs, which we will probably not get anywhere near that uh, at, at all, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, so, uh, is Mr. Cook. Are you going to say anything about Wednesday night stuffing the eggs? Oh, yes. So if council were to approve that, we would need help, obviously, stuffing and those eggs. The eggs, we, I'll order their eggs tomorrow morning. It's gonna take two to three days for them to get shipped in. So that's putting your eggs at Thursday night or Friday night. What, oh, yeah. You so, know, because of the ordering of it. Second. Yeah. We had talked about it over the weekend, but I didn't want to order them until council was, uh, every, all council members talked about it. Yeah. So I can order them first thing. We can do a thousand that are filled with Smarties, and then you can do a thousand empties relatively cheap. I think the whole thing was like 240 bucks for 2,000 eggs. Yeah. And then go out and buy candy then stuff the other ones. Yeah. The know, other but thousand. that, I, I'm putting it out there. I'm, I can order them, but it's two to three day turnaround. So if it's, if we get these things on Friday, then do we want to go out and just buy eggs normally? Like we had talked about. You're going to pay a lot more money. Mm -hmm. That's true. So are we set on the 420? Is, is it possible to maybe do it? I mean, this is up to yeah. you guys. I'm just being advocate. Do we do oh, it the weekend yeah. after? You know, to allow that shipment of eggs to come in, and and because if not, Saturday order them first thing. One mistake happens with the shipping. One accident happens on the cargo plane or something like that. Then we out of eggs. Out where how many eggs? I know where you can get them for free. Where? Where at? The food pantry. They were looking for places and churches and people to give them away. Like they plastic eggs? Huh? Plastic eggs? Plastic eggs. They have candy in them already? No. No. They are empty. <laughs> but if you're going to order empty. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, explain how many have we got, Amy? They had like four or five trash bags full. I can check tomorrow yes. and see if they still have them because the Methodist Church has them and they're trying to give them away to everybody. Mm. And we even started awesome. letting people take as many as they wanted as they, and they were in packages. And they were to let them take as many as they wanted. Okay. Have, um, have we got a number on what 
total amount we're looking for. That's your guys' discussion. Mr. Cook, what do you recommend? Well, Park Lane is doing 20,000. Yeah. I look at, if we do 1,000 uh, up here, 20 seconds are gonna be done. Well, a, we don't know how many people are going to attend. No, so you don't have like, any idea, but I'm, I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of between three to 5,000 eggs. Do you guys want to? It is a lot of eggs. I think it's, uh, more, Mr. Shammy? It's too soon. We can push it off a week. Why don't we already pooper? But. Yeah, you want to push it off a week? Because everyone's doing theirs this week. It was just an idea. Easter's this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, what was that? Well, that's your call. How do you feel about it, Mr. Cook? If we were to wait, push off a week. I mean, we don't celebrate 4th well, of July on 4th of July. I guess the only thing I'm looking at is you've got park playing in what, this weekend? Yeah, everyone's this weekend. If you, if you move off another week, you're gonna probably draw everybody else in. Probably. And then we need 20,000 eggs. Yeah, we need 20,000 eggs. Well, the, Mr. Mayor. Wait a second, Mr. Lowry. Or will we look silly doing it after the holiday? Possibility. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I know we do fourth, we do it before the fourth, but yeah, if we true. did it after the fourth, it would look kind of weird. So, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Bridge, are you order, going to order a thousand already filled? I was waiting to see how you guys decided to do it. The, 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 the only option they have left, the company they have, they have Smarties. the only candy filled they have is Smarties. Okay. That's it. And then, I like Smarties. You know. <laughs> Twitch rolls, you know, whatever. Sure. Uh, what does council think just ordering whatever eggs we're going to have and make them all have candy in them already? How much is a thousand of those? Do you know offhand? No, it was two forty for two thousand. So to Matt. Well, two forty for two thousand. It was. So. so well, I'm not. I'm not concerned about getting the eggs stuffed. My problem is getting the eggs, the eggs here on time. And if, if they've got a thousand, two thousand, then I think you've got a, a good leg up on this thing. And if we have to go out here and buy candy at uh, Walmart or Sam's, Sam's Club. Club or whatever and spend an evening putting these things together, it's going to be a little bit better because. You get the kids out there and you get an egg with a Smarty in it. Well, you get 20 eggs with 20 Smarties yeah, in it. Yeah, with 20 <laughs> Smarties in there. That's not going to go down too good. I agree with you, Mr. Cook, on that one. Mr. Bridge, do you have anything on the matter? Any opinion? Scrap the idea. You're the professional. Plastic ones. Do you want my honest opinion? Yeah. I think it's a great event. I think execution-wise is going to be tough this year, to be honest with you. Is there a way to get a little creative, like, what's the next big event after Easter? Fourth of July. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to have fireworks in the next year. Memorial Day. Firecracker hunt. Yeah. Like, can we, like, theme this hunt, like, still do the Easter egg? Uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking. So I think it's a very important thing, and I think probably it's probably not a memorial. Day. I, I think it's a memorial day hunt. Huh? That's no, that's honoring. You know, yeah, know. Um, maybe tied into a fireworks thing, but you can't call it an Easter egg hunt. Here's my fear. I'll be honest with you. Given the short time, we don't know what we're going to get. We don't know if we need ten thousand. No one, our luck or anyone's luck, you 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 anticipate to needing twenty thousand eggs, and you go through a, a thousand. You have nineteen just sitting out there, or it could be the foot play that you you know that way. So. I don't know. It's a tough call. It it, it is. Um, I'm a planner when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, I would just be cautious that if I order these eggs, there's no room for error on the shipment. I hate to say if something does happen and we get the eggs late, doesn't mean we can't stock them for next year, especially if they're empty. Yeah. Um, I would love to look into the eggs that you have because that point in time we go out buy candy. Yeah. And if we get eggs and it's not so, so it's not so much of a, if it doesn't work out per se, and we have too little or too less, at least we got the eggs free and then we're just on the hook for the candy. So I'm trying to run through all these scenarios to appease everyone. Um, I honestly don't think you should do a lot of eggs because if we have ours on the 20th, clearly there's competition. It seems to me the one in Bethel Township has been going on far longer than ours has, so people are just automatically going to go there. 
Um, they're not going to think to come here. Um, and then you got your timing. What time does their start versus our start? Um, so yeah, it's just it's a it's a tough it's too call. Close. It's too close. Hmm? It, Miss Watson. As far as that notification goes, I'm and I, I sorry. <laughs> I mean, we're on Facebook, and we can get we can get word out very easily. I mean, yeah, that's that, not the problem. I mean, information flies quick. Um, I'm just more worried about people already having plans or going to the other one versus ours and. Miss Watson, what do you, what do you got? We at Bethel Township, Miami County, also do a um, Easter egg hunt. Um, we um, we have a, more time to plan, obviously, than this short notice. But we um, get donations of prizes for the, you know, they they do the they get the eggs filled with candy, but then they win prizes, and we get donations from everywhere, big baskets, things to give out. So if you have a little more time to plan, you could really make this event that, you know notable instead of just it's really short timing to plan a really good easter egg hunt i think you know it's a great idea and, you know put it on the books and we'll get a committee going and we start early getting donations for it and and get it going it'd be great but i think you're pushing to do it so quick all right council any other comments mr cop can i go on to the, the sign that not I know it's not productive or insert, you know, going to be exactly that way that you're wanting to put on the building. Oh, okay. And the purchase of the building should be done by the citizens, not by council. What? You read the sign you want to put there. You've got the whole. Oh, thing. that, oh, no, no, that's just letters to put on there so that you guys can see what it's like. But. That's just, that was just for informational for you guys tonight. I, I would know to me to discuss it or anything because I'm not close to doing anything with the signs. But that was just, she was putting stuff on there, you know, because it's really going to say by ordinance whatever council wanted to do on. But we're talking about Easter eggs. We're talking about Easter eggs. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry if I, I caught me off guard there with that. Mr. Cook, you have something you want to say? I can just see it written on your face. I guess I understand both sides of this thing. And yes, I think we may be a little bit late in trying to plan this and, and pull off something that is going to be worthwhile to the community. Maybe we better put this on the agenda for next year. Probably a good idea. I'm going to throw a wrench into this. <laughs> Another one? <laughs> Just throwing it out there. What if you still go ahead with the vent, but you downscale it, and you say it's a toddler Easter egg hunt? That way you have a smaller footprint, you don't have the bigger kids coming and doing their thing, you don't have to worry about different sections, and you're not gonna need nearly, probably less than a thousand eggs. And you give an age group, that way you still get it out there, you get it going. Um, but that's just my two cents. Like I said, I was gonna throw a wrench in it. Mr. Lowry. Yeah, that was a, like a crescent wrench. Well, hey, you guys do this all the time. How's it feel? <laughs> now, my only thought on that is, is you're going to hurt some people's feelings doing it that Which way, in my opinion. <laughs> right. Why does my sister get to go, or brother get right. to go, and I don't? Yeah. I have to wait in the car. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one other thing of concern that's a great idea. Um, we do have separate age groups, but what kind of candy you put in the eggs for our toddlers is you no, need to be definitely. careful with that and yeah. smarties would not be no, one for ideal toddlers. <laughs> so situation you know, there's a lot of things you have to look at it, you know to do but but i think, all right you know so have you going to help our committee next year <laughs> I, can, I can certainly help get this going all right any other other business we're at the very end we're at the very 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 end except for the last item well one more thing mr please. mayor M mr uh, lowry i just uh, wanted to thank our colleague jacob here he was great advice from the job. and with that being said well no not, no yeah. no adjournment right uh do we have a motion to go into executive session to discuss the employment of a public employee mr mayor move it we go into executive session to discuss the employment of a public employee is there a second so mr shammy Miss, any discussion on this? Hearing none, Miss Berner. Okay. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. 
Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. We will now go into executive session to discuss uh, a public employee. If you all, I don't expect okay. any discussion Thanks after the meeting. So, oh, okay. and for our so seniors or juniors, we are more than welcome to uh, sign your cards. You all want to come up? Because you can't stay in that. 